Yes, Patty, Patty, Patty Frudenberg, our host, Inspire Inclusion 2024. Uh, man, what a what a cool, cool theme for this year, Patty, for 2024. Uh, they always come up with a brand new one. How are you doing today, our host, for today's show? Hey, I, I'm doing really, really good. I'm excited to be here and celebrating uh, with Miss You Graham and... <laughs> The Presents Network and United States Presidential Services Center, Women's History Month, okay? And, you know, it's an honor, so thank you. Exactly, Women's History Month. Uh, today is International Women's Day. Today is March 8th, 2024. Uh, we do have a theme this year, of course, that they issued from the United Nation and the Women's Day uh, website if you are following every year to see what they're going to do it's inspire inclusion this year we have a bunch of guests to get to right away patty um, i am going to run down into the corner so i won't be completely <laughs> gone but i'm going to run down into the corner the first one i want to invite is running for public office um, it is true she is my wife stormy mongello like patty always says stormy <laughs> <laughs> Do it for us, Patty. Stormy! Stormy! I mean, what a name. You know, it's a force to be reckoned with. Pardon the pun. So, Hi. Stormy, Hi. Uh, away with Patty. And uh, I would just say, you know, Stormy is running for public office, but today she is going to talk about uh, the female owned and created company that she works at every day of the week. So, uh, so proud of what they are doing, uh, women in business. So, yeah, um, I'm currently working for a company uh, that is female owned. I'm a human resources business partner, and uh, I had worked with this uh, lady, Crystal. I'd worked with her um, about 10 years ago, and she has gone out on her own and has become an HR consultant and doing um, fractional HR work to where uh, somebody may not need a full-time human resources person, but they still need all of the uh, advice and uh, coaching and um um different services that we can offer for them so yeah i uh, started working with her last year as a contractor so i had i was my own uh self-employed uh women female business owner but then i was hired as an employee by her as of uh, january of this year so i'm very happy um some of my duties include uh, payroll benefits, um, just a wide range. Um, today I was creating a, uh, employment application for one of our clients. Uh, so it's, it's just been a lot of, uh, interesting things. And we've, uh, took over a client and didn't realize that they were in 21 different States. <laughs> so we had to, uh, established tax accounts and uh withholding and state um uh excuse me state uh unemployment and also withholding taxes for each one of those states and then some states have their own fa paid family leave programs so we had to uh uh orient ourselves to get all of that together that all that information for the company for the companies. And so that's been a long project that I've actually been working on since last year. So there's new states that keep popping up that we need the information for. So it's uh, it's great. It's uh, definitely kept me on my toes and uh, busy with a lot of different, um, as I said, different clients and across uh, different uh, types of companies from staffing services to uh, cell phone tower and leasing companies to even small construction companies. So it's been a wide variety. So, yeah. So Stormy, can I ask you, you know, when you're talking about all these things, have yeah. you now like become a jack of all trades, just like getting to know how that business operates even though you're doing another part of it 
However, you still have to have an understanding. So how is that? Yeah, that was, uh, we had to uh, really follow along with the changes in the organizations uh, to go through name changes uh, for uh, one of the organizations had gone through uh, being bought out and they had a name change. And so that's why I had to go through all those 21 different states to get their name changed. Uh, so that's uh <laughs> how about like the checks and balances now that's a lot of work so yeah is it like is now technology so far ahead that like once you put in the information it will know to like a check or a, a human i would think has to like verify you know make sure that stormy got it right so how is that like yeah it's uh each state has a different process of course so uh, we would, uh, we have uh, uh, project tracking software that we use uh, that uh, so I can make notes and keep track of my progress on each of those individual states. And then I can do a check, a little check off uh, to whenever I get done with one. So that's really, uh, really uh satisfying to get through with one of the states uh for sure but there are um sometimes we get notices sometimes we just know that we have employees in those particular states and then our payroll company um prints out a list of all of our uh tax accounts and different things like that as well to help us check and balance that's awesome you know, again, here you are getting uh, educated on like high technology. You know, you're you're doing a lot. I, I could see well how you pair up with Marty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, Stormy. Stormy's going to run off to the studio audience. Yes. Uh, Workday is not <laughs> over for ladies. Uh, uh, they are. 52% of the entire workforce on Earth. Uh, there are more women working on this planet than human males. So often a fact that she brings up uh, at her public office uh, speeches uh, at various different events. Thank you so much, Stormy. Next guest, uh, Thank you for having International me. Women's Day. Patty, that I have for you is Charlene Doke Bauer of Canada, uh, uh, an award-winning, multi-award-winning filmmaker across the world. And Charlene uh, is getting ready. What an honor. She's going to Hollywood. I always think of America's Got Talent. You're going to Hollywood. She's going to Hollywood. As long as she can make it out of the snows, um, you know, she's got to get out of Canada, out of Ontario first. And I'm like watching TV with these 18 wheelers lined up for 40 miles down interstate. What is it? 80, uh, you know, all the way up there, that, that, that one that goes across Montana. And I'm like, I hope she can make it out to down to the sunny to get to to Hollywood. So I give you Charlene Doak Gebauer. Amazing and welcome, welcome. Oh, and again, you. I'm going to admit I had a little sneak peek of some of your work. So uh, congratulations again on all your amazing and really inspiring because it's serving such a like important purpose so tell us a little bit more about yourself and let us know what you're doing now and uh, congratulations again well thank you yeah i am um, i've been working in researching and doing online child protection now for 10 years i've written two books and developed my theory of digital supervision for parents to have user-friendly proactive methods to protect their children online and I'm just recently finishing my new theory of digital sex trafficking, which a lot of people talk about anti-human trafficking, but the biggest problem now is our children online. And my family said, why don't you do a documentary? And I said, well, sure, I'll do a documentary. And then I sat down and I thought, well, where do I start? And I have to say, I felt like a mosquito in a nudist colony. I had no idea where to begin. So I started researching online and this is where the internet is, is to a great advantage and learned all about uh, video editing. I'm a computer science specialist in education so I could learn a lot about uh, video editing because of my background. It's just easier once you've got that basis. 
and ended up with a documentary and never dreamed it would win 25 awards and certainly be screened in Los Angeles. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you know, when you're talking like a really, I'm, I'm sure at some point, you know, isn't it, is, isn't it like amazing the divinity of, of how it was lined up? You know, you, you learned how to do these things. Little did you know, as you said, little did you know, it was preparing you, it was laying a foundation for you to have your, your, your armor on to get work done that is so needed. And it really, it really is a bittersweet thing because of the internet, you were able to find your resources. However, it's also being used as a weapon. I don't know if you want to elaborate more. And this really, you know, brings up a lot of, you know, topics <laughs> to say the least, being a grandma to a nine and a half year old who oh. loves her iPad. Oh, oh yes. I, so many people, um, well, first of all, they picture bomb social media all the time of their children, pictures of their children. And it's important not to do that because whether you know people or not, whether you think that you have tight security on your social media, uh, there are YouTube videos on how to crack the, the security codes. And people are using face on pictures of their children, trying to find them on social media because they can use facial recognition software to do so. And the list goes on and parents give personal information about their grandchildren or their children or grandchildren. And uh, this information can be used in very unsafe environments for children. That's just one aspect. Um, I, I'd like to share why I started this. A lot of people want to know. And I started it because I had a family member who was a victim of child pornography at the age of four. And this was by neighbors. She was just going over and, and playing with the child. And they were using their two children and my family member and another child from the neighborhood. This is how easy this is done and how good they are at convincing children that what they're doing is okay. And unfortunately, when she was 22, she was killed by a drunk driver. And I was also a victim at the age of 15 by a teacher on a field trip, not for uh, child pornography or child sexual abuse material is what it's being called now. But boy, when you've experienced it, and then you find out that there's a four-year-old member of your family experiencing it, I'm very determined to make a difference in the world. Very determined for a lot of personal reasons. And I suggest that everyone heed what I'm saying, because I've researched my computer science background. I've worked with students in schools. I've managed a computer network. I really can share a lot with people. And this is why I'm doing all of this. Thank you so much, Charlene. I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, and, and thank you for being vulnerable for the greater of good. And the idea is, you know, you, you might know a little bit about me. I, I deal with, with death <laughs> yeah. and it's not always a conversation people want to have. However, it's a necessary conversation. And I don't want to get off course. I want to go back to your purpose and mission mm -hmm. and passion of the reason, the why. When do we have these conversations, Charlene? Could you I go know. into that with me? It's a conversation that we have to have with our children. And it's not a matter of saying, are you doing this online? It's a matter of following my theory of digital supervision to supervise them on devices directly. There are parents just about killing people, driving their children to school. They're driving them to school. There's gas fumes all over the school playground and everything for parents protecting their children, yet they will give them very dangerous devices, which I call a cell phone is the most dangerous device you can give a child and not looking at what they're doing online, which is where digital sex trafficking is starting, which is where cyberbullying is. And these are all things that we have to realize are very important for us to discuss with our children. Don't trust your children. And Patty, I don't know about you, but I lied to my parents like a drunken sailor. We all did. We all want to get off with things. And unfortunately, the internet is providing such an insidious platform for these children 
that they can lie and not be found out. Digital supervision will help parents do this. The conversation about, have you seen pornography? Pornography is causing more problems for our children than people realize. First person shooter video games. They're making killing people fun, which is why we're seeing conflict resolution being resolved through a gun or a knife or violent acts. We have to start catching up to the digital age. We have to start supervising what our children are doing and guiding them. Well said. And, you know, it is a tricky territory because, like you said, you know, when do you start the conversation? It never seems like it's the right time to. And I was thinking the same thing. You took the words right out of my mind. Kids lie. And that, you know, for multiple reasons, they don't want to get in trouble. They're embarrassed. You know, they, they, they think they won't do it again for whatever reason that causes them to lie. And then I also reckon that, and, and you will know more because of your research. However, that there, it's also you being used for bribery and, you know, right in, in, in the bedroom next door, underneath the parents face, they're, they're getting bribed and extorted. And, uh, if you could go into that a little bit more, uh, and thank you again. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we are going to be following, of course, and hopefully transmitting a live show from Hollywood, California, uh, while you're there and showcasing your film in the theaters. And that leads us really to our next guest, uh, because we have an opportunity for um, you to come together while you're there uh, in Hollywood. And so I think this will be quite exciting at the Signlight Film Festival, the International Film Festival. And that leads us to our next guest. Uh, I'm going to actually, for Charlene, uh, ask her to stay on to, to listen to our next guest, um, who one of her best friends uh, is uh, Michelle there and is in Hollywood, works in the industry uh, her whole life and is a huge, huge part of the Signlight Film Festival. So uh, this is the first year of this festival for people who are deaf and working in the film industry. Nice. And uh, we're very, very pleased now to introduce to you, Patty, uh, Jean Marie Russo, uh, who is working with Michelle and, and also Jean Marie uh, runs her own speakers bureau for all over the world, conventions, conferences, symposiums, speaking events. Uh, so she's going to tell us more about that now as a female owned business and uh, proud to have Jeannie on with us today. Private friends call her Jeannie. Uh, uh, so Patty, she'll, she'll probably say, just call me Jeannie, but Jean Marie Russo. Absolutely. Jean Marie Russo, welcome to the Presents Network on this International Women's Day in the month of March, where we celebrate women all month long. Tell us a little bit more and thank you for joining us. And congratulations, oh, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And first and foremost, thank you very, very much for inviting me, for being here. I'm very, very humbled. Thank you, Marty, for, for such a... Um, uh, an introduction, and it is such a pleasure to meet you, Patty, and everyone on, on the show today. I do want to thank um, the people that have been before us, before I even begin, uh, the women in the workforce, the veterans, the disabled veterans, the wounded warrior women. We really, really need to keep them at our hearts and it's in gratitude that they are a part of history and the legacy that they have will continue. And as far as my goodness, yes, Michelle Barron is, is um, a, dear, a dear friend of mine, as well as CJ Jones. And CJ is an Emmy Award winning deaf actor and producer. Um, and he is one of my speakers and he is truly um just brilliant and I, I love him dearly he has a sense of humor he recently starred in avatar 2 and he is the creator of the navi sign language so definitely um beautiful, just a man beautiful. that touches my heart absolutely and um, the sign light studios we can begin with that very quickly is 
It is a place that CJ created. I'm on his advisory board, but it is a place that he created so that the deaf and hard of hearing community, there are only 2% that are working because they are labeled disabled. That is so not acceptable. And they want to work. They have abilities. It's not disabilities. They have abilities. And so CJ created Signlight Studio, a, non, um, a nonprofit organization, to have to mentor them, to coach them, to train them, to give them certifications so that they can learn behind the camera, behind the scenes and everything, and then move into the for-profit sign world studios. So then they have an opportunity to have employment afterwards. So this is occurring. He created the very first international deaf and hard of hearing film festival and that is taking place april 16th through the 20th in hollywood california and so it, it truly is going to be history in the making but it is truly um looking forward to the future wow and so yeah Beautiful. so that's Beautiful. exciting it truly truly is so can we go back a little bit how, yes. how did you and cj um, you know, Me? cross, cross each other you to know, form this beautiful, um, you know, <laughs> purpose I here. Am, yes. I am. I am trying to remember back then. I, I do a lot of networking. That's when you know, that's when you know you're good friends when you can't even remember when. I know. Yeah, this you, is, you said enough. Say no it's more. been five years. It's been five plus years, truly. And, um, I, you know, he approached me about speaking and and yes it was truly we we had like-mindedness and we were taught speaking business and i was working with him and joined their advisory board and it was just it, it is a part of me definitely to network but definitely to elevate people and their business and I, I see value and I see my mantra is making a difference. And I could see so much about how he has made a difference and Michelle. And Michelle was with Disney for 25 years and she actually was on the very, very first creating um, the first disability for Disney. So it truly, everybody is leaving their mark. Everybody has various gifts, but it's all about change and diversity and just inclusion. It truly is. And, and, and one key thing before we go over to Marty and Charlene, I know you have a, you, you have a response, but I, I, I do want to say thank you because the first is a big deal. You know, the, the trailblazing. So Truly. kudos. You know, I, I don't take that lightly. Marty, over to you. And thank you so much. Yeah, I was just going to say this is a momentous occasion because mm -hmm. uh, as Jeannie um, builds her Speakers Bureau larger and larger, um, you know, we have in front of us today on International Women's Day, we have a lady who is going to Hollywood, who has been invited there to screen her mm -hmm. film into theaters staring at me right now and i mean this is a great opportunity for charlene uh dr charlene doke devour in canada uh to come into the bureau uh because obviously she is doing very well if you look at the 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 awards that she's received from all over the earth for her film vulnerable innocence so for somebody to say we would love to have uh you know uh, this particular doctor come to the convention mm -hmm. and be a guest speaker and and do a special screening or something and we're willing to pay for that you know twenty to forty thousand uh, dollars you know that's that's a fantastic client to have in the bureau and then you have patty um you know patty is now just published her book uh, on grieving and i would like patty to Yep, live your legacy. So a, a new spin on morning. Patty, what she's doing with her workbook is offering it 
uh, two groups in symposiums at events and conventions. And so anybody who has experienced loss and would like to come into the work session and get a copy of her book, which is a workbook, okay? And, and go through page by page and as Patty does her thing and then a break and you come back for another session to finish and wrap up. Uh, this is a, another momentous opportunity, I think, to bring in an excellent speaker. And you can see uh, she is filled with the joy of life. We call her Chatty Patty, Peppermint Patty. And uh, Jeannie, I have now named Jeannie in a bottle. So uh, we're going to get some of that Jeannie, I, Jeannie my music. Magic. My magic. The magic. magic. No. So yeah. uh, I, I just... I just think we should we should hear from Patty a little bit about the direction of her business and how it's growing into funeral homes and into private families that want to have like you know at a at a funeral it can be difficult sometimes I think you know you have 20 to 25 people driving in flying in and then there's always a couple of dozen who just couldn't make it you know and they're so heartbroken but when you say that there's a space being made available that the family has purchased at the hotel in a room or at the funeral home in a room. And all of us that are here are going there for a certified death doula um, who is going to come in and help us with bereavement and, and healing and this whole process. And we are going to be streaming also. So, so Roger, Donald, Alfred, Aloysius, John, you know, all of the, 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 the people who couldn't come, Susan, Mary, we're going to bring you in on that if you would like to, if you would like to. And Patty, can you tell us about how your business is growing with this? Well, it's growing really well. However, if I may just go back just for one second, because it's like literally like on my heart, I'm still like amazed at the first timers with what we just heard. I'm amazed to be, you know, sitting with these beautiful award women, award winning women on this day in this month. And it just reminds me of like Neville, um, not, not Neville Goddard, um, uh, who Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill. Uh, and, 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 you know, that his inspiration with the hearing aid, and, you know, when, when you're sharing, you know, like we're all creatives, I think here, you know, clearly. And the idea is that when you mastermind as Napoleon Hill, uh, you know, recommended with other, with other creatives, just so much glory comes out of it. And I mean, I feel like this is in the making, like even you ladies meeting each other, you know, for the goodness of God. And maybe, maybe with you guys, we'll do something with, with this, who knows? Uh, I, I will get right into it. I, I just, I just want to say that I'm, I'm just really, really excited about, you know, the, um, the hearing because again, just to close with this about that, it's the perspective we will never know. We could only, I guess, put something on that we can't, it's like good, good headphones on that will prevent sound coming in to get an idea or maybe go underwater. And even that, I don't know if it would be the accurate to be, uh, you know, feeling like somebody who can hear. And the idea that they could, uh, on film, on paper, on, you know, uh, but besides the work stuff, I'm talking about the creative stuff right now. You know, the perspective of a world through different senses is just so beautiful to me. And it really, I'm just going to segue right into, 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 into this because it's again, those, I'm going to start crying. I'm a little emotional today. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is Patty in the raw. Um, this is, this is who I am. And, you know, I bring life into death. That's, that's how I consider myself. I find that a strength. It, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little potent. That's why, even though I am certified to uh, give respite to hospice nurses, and this is like all kidding aside, I've been asked to do that. I qualify to do that. However, you know, I feel like that's a little too disruptive, even though I consider myself disruptive in a barnstorming kind of shout out the good news kind of way, a uh, political style, you know, stormy. Uh, however, uh, you know, I, I'm also my own force to be reckoned with, you know, woman, I am woman, hear me roar. And this is the roaring twenties. And this is real. And I love that we're doing this together. We do rise. Thank you, Marty, for being a woman supporter, but going back to, to like, to this book and the mysteries of life 
And, you know, these are inevitable things that happen to us. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are things that happen to us. And how do we move on from there and get stronger? Just like the movies uh, bring raise awareness for goodness, um, prevent from, you know, prevent things, you know, just inspiring, motivating. And this is the same vein. This is, this is exclusively more if you're coping with grief because grief is real. Grief is also a physiological uh, happening. I mean, they, they've done studies. I have a playlist on my channel, my YouTube channel. If you follow me, I couldn't get my, my, my barcode up today. So excuse, uh, this is my, 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 my raw background. However, if you follow me in my playlist on YouTube, it's the channel's Miss You Graham. Then I have a, sh um, a, a playlist that is called uh, sh Grief Shorts. And in there, there is my last uploaded video, I believe an NBC, you know, four, four minutes. And they will show you. And it actually, all, you know, I do, I'm all about resources, uh, just like Charlene, you guys. I'm all about like promoting information. This information, I, I consider your like your emergency kit. You know, like the ones we sent Marty during the, you know, during, uh, the war sure. continues, but the life-saving kits for civilians, that, that was real. And thank God we were able to raise $25,000. I know I, I go off sidebar a lot. I just kind of like, I'm a very like, okay, I'm going to pipe it down now. <laughs> hey, that's why I tell people it's a machine gun. When you talk with Patty, you're going to get staccato fire. That's why, that's why I say Patty from New York to give him a little, a, a little, a little insight. But you know what? The bottom line is that this is your bare essentials. It's nothing new under the sun. You're going to see things here. And I, and again, this is the genesis of a series. And in my workshops, if you go to my website, the menu is very fully loaded. You know, we're always making it better. However, in there, there's workshops. And because I provide, really, I'm a concierge service. You know, if, if, if the best hotel, Ritz Carlton, has the best room in the house, they're going to have a butler, right? And that butler serves each guest completely different. Different champagne, different sheets, different reservations. And that's who I am in regards to serving a workshop. I do business settings. I do public settings. I do virtual settings. I also do very intimate settings uh you know i do have a group thing going on i don't do one-on-one -on -one anymore i used to do one-on-one -on -one clients uh I, I just don't do that anymore because you know i'm just i'm just doing at a, at a mass level because this is i just feel it in my heart just like you guys you know we're, we're working on mass levels now and you know um and that's what it's all about so thank you so much uh for letting me go on and on of course absolutely no i just was excited to make these connections, especially with Signlight International Film Festival and Charlene's going out there. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're working on some things with them uh, as well. April 16th to the 20th in Hollywood, um, you know, stars converge, uh, opportunities occur. And I would love to set uh, Charlene up with a meeting with Michelle Barron while she's out there in Hollywood. What do you think, uh, Charlene? Sure. <laughs> Oh, that would be absolutely. great. Absolutely, she's the absolutely. top, 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 and, and a very nice person. Also, she's she not is. your typical plastic Hollywood person mm -mm. with some assorted thirty-five different, mm -mm. Uh, you know, uh, plastic surgeries that they've had, where it mm -mm. takes ten minutes to tell you all about the cleft chin they had inserted, <laughs> and the fatty injection for the fake muscles in the bicep, and and you know uh, all these different things. Uh, she was just a uh, a very genuine real person and so refreshing very refreshing for a yes. hollywood -ite. i have a bit of a surprise today from the uh international women's day 2024 inspire inclusion that i want to share with everybody let's watch this uh video that they made it's a short very short film that they put on so i think this would be really cool uh, let me see here if I can. Yeah, here it is right here. Let me see if I can put this on. And uh, I'll make it a little bit larger. And I've got sound, so here it is.
There you go, guys. Inspire Inclusion 2024. I got it. <laughs> uh, just, just fantastic stuff. So many comments coming in from all over. Uh, just, just amazing to see all these these comments. I gotta, I gotta share a few with you here. Bella is on. Isn't Bella down in Atlanta, Patty? Yep. I, I was uh, I got to be interviewed by Bella and it was really beautiful. Bella unplugged. She had a premiere again for in celebration of women. It was really beautiful. She's amazing. I love her and uh, thank you for. Oops. I yeah, to Adam is is That's jumping in there. there. By the way, Bella's watching on YouTube. You can see that there. All the different people coming in. Uh, she is coming in from YouTube. So this is one of the strengths of broadcasting in a simulcast to two hundred and five countries and territories. But when you simulcast, the benefit is you're on eight different networks. So, you know, somebody uh, uh, who's tuning in on the Twitch Entertainment Network, you'll notice the the little purple Twitch symbol, okay? Or somebody like Aaron uh, in Maryland right now uh, at the warehouse, he is on from LinkedIn. So I think this is, this is always cool. And uh, Jeannie, we got a notification that you are a new member on YouTube. So yes, I am. Uh, simulcast is is the way to go, uh, whichever way people would like to to reach us, to watch us, to comment. We answer your questions live here. Uh, you know, I, I think that's one of the huge benefits. I want to showcase a big, big uh, plus up here today for the festival, because uh, this was one of the things that was another surprise and and. I'm, I'm super happy to share this with you that we did invest in a woman owned business today. So if you were to go to our public portfolio, uh, you would see, you know, on Kiva, this is my public portfolio. You would see here uh, all of the investments. I have about 85 investments that I've done right now. Today, we are doing a double matched loan uh, through Hitachi. Thank you, Hitachi of Japan for backing us to invest, as you can see up here on the top in 4,000 women, 4,000 women owned businesses today. And we went down to Guatemala just because my church happens to be in Guatemala all the time uh, through the Presbyterian church. Uh, our, our home church is Long Creek Presbyterian church. And so I was fishing around in Guatemala and Stormy also invested in a female owned business today. But uh, 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 Las Estrellitas group is looking for $7,175. And they're going to get some flour, sugar, yeast, and eggs at wholesale prices. They're running a bakery. And so look at, look at how badass these eight women are. I mean, is this not cool? And uh, uh, Marina is, is, you know, the leader of this group. And uh, she's married to a cardamom farmer, and they have seven kids uh, from seven to 23 years old. And uh, she's worked hard, so five of her children are actually receiving a secondary education. Two of them are married now, and she's got a grandson. And for 19 years, she's done this. I've made a living by selling chicken and growing cardamom. And recently, uh, she mentioned one of her sons uh, took the initiative of studying baking techniques and this she felt like taught her the importance of establishing a new business which uh, has demand in her community so for the first two weeks um, they employed a baker to do the work and teach the family the business and now of course you know they're taking everything over and this is her her first loan to purchase all the ingredients to make delicious bread and the the community bank that they're part of down there is amazing okay so you can get in on these loans for as little as 25 bucks. Um, and remember, it's not a donation. This is a loan when you work with us in Kiva. So your money gets paid back. Uh, but this bank is the Community Bank of Friendship Bridge. And I can tell you right now, um, they've done over 21 million in loans so far through microcredit. And that's Marina um, up there uh, on the top left. And so, yeah, this is the whole group. Marina, Elsa, Maria, Norma, Antonio, Maricela, Marcelina, Maria, Annabella, Cristina, and Antonio. 
And uh, you can read more about this loan and you can read more about Friendship Bridge, uh, which is a nonprofit in Guatemala, if you would like to. Like I said, this uh, is a, a double match loan by Hitachi. And if you invest today, um, you will get the special Women's Day 2024 symbol. And you can see there I am right there. I've already invested. Okay. Oh, Patty jumped in and invested. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> You sneaky thing, you. Uh, these are all the, the people who have invested so far. Okay. We can load a few more. And then we have uh, 23 right now. Um, so we're looking to crank this up. And we have some lending teams that have jumped in here already. Eight lending teams. Nerdfighters has uh, quite a few members, uh, 13,000 members. And, of course, Hitachi, uh, 2,000 some members. So, you know, we will we will crank this up. We will keep you informed. This will be a 14-month loan. And uh, the partner is going to cover currency loss. So the difference between the American dollar and down there in Guatemala, or if like Charlene was to invest in Canada versus, you know, the currency exchange, they're going to cover that. Okay, sometimes that's not covered. And I lose like a penny here or three cent there in currency loss uh, over the, the multi-month period. So uh, any comments about what's going on with, with this group? Phenomenal that, you know, what they're doing and they're, they have a passion. Marty, I think that is, that is so key to love what you're doing and you, you won't be working. Even though it's hard work, it, it truly comes out with what they're doing and who they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. All my other loans are funded and, uh, you know, people do ask like, Hey, Marty, can you give us an update on some of that other stuff? Uh, like the half million dollars, um, that was provided, you know, to the 25,000 women chicken farmers. That was so cool last year in Nigeria, uh, 25,000 women chicken farmers. And it's like, yeah, it was cool. I was telling Stormy uh, today at Robotics, watching Rainia with her robotics team, um, that that entire loan is paid back. Okay, it's over. So all the money came back. And that's what's awesome about this is this is not GoFundMe where we're asking people to make donations. This is like super serious impact, like Babangona Farmers right here in Nigeria and providing somebody with $500,000 in cash in a briefcase. And, you know, you can see on that one, it took uh, 14,624 people, you know, each coming in for 25 bucks. Okay. So this is the power of helping 25,000 women, you know, be empowered themselves. And this was only a 14 month loan. That's why it's paid back already. We gave him the cash in 2022. This loan is over. We got all the dough back. So people like to see success. Uh, they like to see, you know, what we're doing. And uh, total loans with Baban Gona right now, you can see here is, is approaching 5 million in total. They've come back several times, uh, you know, several times. So great news, great news there. I just wanted to Good share morning. something. You know yeah. what that reminds me of too, that I don't think you touched base on that if you if you invest in these businesses, right, that that it, it could remain revolving. Like you don't have to keep going. It's like a what it can be. It, you don't have to be, but it can be a one time and it just keeps multiplying too. Because like right. you, you know, you you just you get it back sometimes with a little bit of extra and then you just keep rotating it. So it's really That's a lovely right. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, we've been in open 18 years now with this. Um, you know, uh, I, people ask me, like, how did I do the $2 billion celebration last year? Um, so I have that badge, the $2 billion team. That's over. You can't get that badge anymore. The only one you can get now is join us for the road to $3 billion. This is a brand new badge that you can, you can earn. And uh, you can join other teams. We have our own team. I'm the captain of the United States Presidential Service Center team. 
but I also belong to the Bank of America team and Wells Fargo team and the Rotary Club team. And these are all the people in, in our team. We have over a hundred. And then if you want to analyze our international portfolio, um, it is heavily weighted towards women. You know, it's like 62% female uh, investments. And these are all my, my loans across the world. And so you can kind of sort of see like, wow, really heavy in Ghana, you know? So that's where you, you, you stop doing loans in Ghana and you say, you know, maybe I could do a loan in Egypt. So I did, I did my first loan in Egypt. And, uh, one of our best ladies, Farah said, Hey, could we invest in Palestine? Could we invest, uh, over there? And absolutely. We have a farm in Palestine now. So that was, that was really cool to see, but you know, all over the world, all over the world here, guys. Okay. And America, we do loans in America. So if anybody's looking for money, um, we just did one for $25,000. Uh, super excited for her. She has got a Zumba gym and, uh, that was really neat. She needed, needed a 25 grand to expand her Zumba gym. So you can keep coming back too, you know? Ladies can keep coming back if they, if they want to come back every year for 25, 25, 25 and grow it up, you know, and bring in 300,000. We have women who have done this like eight times. They keep coming back to us. And when you pay your loans back, it's like, wow, this is their eighth loan. You know, it's, it's, it's not a question. Yvette um, is really, 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 really super psyched about her uh, boom cycling club and getting the 25 grand. And that only took 226 people. Last thing I'll mention is a lot of people say, wow, you know, you had 226 people all with 25 bucks, Marty. Eh, some of them gave 50, you know, uh, some of them gave 25. How did you do the 500 grand with 14,000 people? It was not hard. We have just over 2 million lenders. So you could do one loan a year for 25 bucks, get it back, sit on it like I do. You can see up here, I've got $35 in my account right now. These are people just all doing, paying me back all month long. Okay. And then you just take that money and now, you know, you've got that back and relend it again. And you'll notice your portfolio is 50. So this is how you can crank up in 10 years time, a portfolio that's worth like 10 grand. Cause every time you do that, it doubles. So then you got the 50 back. So now you, you lend that out again. Cause you don't want the money back. You only started with 25. I want to be very clear about that. You only started with 25. You, you now lend the 50. It's you get that back. It's a hundred. Get that back. It's 200. You get that back. It's 400. This is simple math. You get that back. It's 800. You know, this is how you build your portfolio up. And you're capable of supporting these businesses. Um, because honestly, a lot of them ladies, they have nowhere to go. They've already been thrown out by the bank and told not to come back. This is, you know, this is a clown's uh, opportunity and we're not going to engage in this type of risky investment and you have no collateral or equity infusion. Uh, your 150 page business plan looked like dog meat and please don't come back. So, you know, uh, thank you so much, Bella. Um, you know, last year for uh, Black History Month, uh, we invested in a black owned doctor's business, a female business. And the last thing I have today for you ladies is I do need to share uh, what is going on with our brand new celebration of American Shiro's. So let me bring that up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, the American Shiro's Foundation of 1776. And I'm going to showcase that to you. And so we're just at ASF1776.org. Uh, I would like to, to show that web address to everybody and that site, because we have a new uh, lady we're getting ready to, to celebrate a little bit later this month. And it's going to be super, super, super cool. So that will bring you into the American Revolutionary War. Living History Center. 
And if you scroll down a little bit on this site, you'll notice a lot of our paintings and videos uh, from last year, International Women's Day 2023. We celebrated Ms. Susanna Twitty Miller. And uh, she is down here. These are a lot of the oil paintings that have been commissioned. So let me just show you Susanna Twitty Miller. She's right here. This is a 17-year-old Shiro. And there you can see the logo. Susanna is in there. The American Shiro's Foundation of 1776. And Susanna fought very close to our home here at 17 years old and was an expert rifle shot and a bareback horse rider and became super famous one day at a battle here for saving her brother's life and then threw open the portcullis door and unlocked the bar and ran out into the middle of the battlefield under fire and stole a dead man's uh, uh, rifle, you know, his cartridges and his powder horn and took it off his lifeless body and ran back into the fort and shut the door. And all the men were like, are you crazy? Susanna, you just ran out into the middle of the battle with firing all back and forth. Are you like nuts? She's like, well, look, I got this cool gun. And <laughs> so with that, I just, I just want to say um, with that, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to just remove that for a second. We are getting ready to issue a medal for Susanna. And this is going to be given out preferably to 17-year-old girls. And let me blow that up a little bit for you. This is a prototype that was sent to us by the, the minting company. And that's, that's pretty thick metal. And you can also notice that on this particular... This particular award, that the ribbon is is double printed on the inside of the, with pictures of the inside of the ribbon. So I thought that was really cool for a prototype sample. And now let me show you this one. And you can you can kind of also hear that. That's thick metal, ladies. And we need your help to be on this committee. But take a look at this one. This is another sample they sent. It's pretty thick also. Very heavy. And a big, big ribbon. I've never seen work done that, that is this nice. So I would just like to, to say... I would like your help, and Stormy would like your help, for you ladies at least to be on this committee to help us I would love to. cast this metal, have it poured, and feature Susanna Twitty. And then, you know, the criteria, much like Patty, that we developed for Rotary International with the Rotary Club of Global Impact, the criterion of award for the first female president in Rotary International's history, uh, Jennifer Jones of Canada. And that whole award now is off and running. So when we look at this lady, this young lady, she did grow up, of course, and get married. Susanna Twitty Miller, she became a Miller. Um, you know, we can do something like that. What do you think about that, Patty? Can you... Can you lend us your ear and help? You know, it's really important because the, the young girls, that's a very, very pivotal moment. And, you know, if they can be recognized for what they're doing, that opens the doors for them to be able to continue in their purpose and their passion that they clearly show if they are nominated to win such an award. And, you know, just sheroes across the board, because, you know, like you said, there might be 52% women in the workforce, but let's just talk about the payroll, okay? Let's talk about our voices being heard. Uh, we still have a long way to go 
And awards like this are only paving the road, giving credit to where credit is due. And, you know, there, there's something to be said about recognition. You know, the army, the, the greatest military of the world in America, they don't give purple hearts out for nothing. Um, so no. with that being said, I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful start. Oh, absolutely. And, and Patty, to add on to that, if um, um, Marty as well, I, I feel that by honoring our, the ge younger generation, the youth, that is giving them a message in their mind. It's building their self-confidence and it is providing a vision for what the future could be and that their life matters. And if they are being given something as significant at this, at this stage, the possibilities are endless. The possibilities for them to make a difference and not only in their community, but on a state level and a national level and a global level. There, I think that message needs to echo. As as a child, I remember feeling that certain positions or certain industries, I could never do that, or our that is for someone of higher education or knowledge or. It, it, and the message was never inviting. It was a man's world or I, I feel that we are needing to be the trailblazers in a sense of giving them permission, giving them the ability to dream and to see how far that it can take them. Marty, may I just add something to, to that beautiful share that just again it was a uh, an airdrop <laughs> that you know you would you just brought to mind with charlene being here with her purpose is that you know charlene you know that it's okay to overcome instead of having it to be that that deep dark secret the overcoming and and girls these type of sheroes like twitties you know they overcame it doesn't always have to be you know, a violation, a physical violation. However, an overcoming should be part of the requirements of some level, you know, whatever it is, even if it's in disability, getting a job because I wasn't allowed, you know, they didn't want to hire me because I wasn't disabled. You know, overcoming should be in a, re a requirement. What did this 17 year old overcome to give her this medal? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That and, and Patty, if I may add to that, our life experiences make us who we are. And our stories are not beginning at the age of 20. I mean, they can begin very, very young. So as you stated, that ability to overcome, what, what was the lesson learned? And what can they share to help someone else, perhaps in that situation? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I cannot agree enough. Um, you know, there is a lot of information here about her. Uh, for those of you who would like to go in and read more, uh, please feel free to come in. Uh, you can see uh, her mom's grave is nearby where she's buried. And... Uh, you know, quite a bit of information here and references. Uh, the next thing I would like to do in finality today before we go off is just say uh, for the American Shiro's Foundation that we have a new painting that is being framed right now. It's of a black Shiro. And again, these types of ladies uh, don't really get any cred. Uh, her name is Kate, Mommy Kate. And she saved the governor of Georgia's life, uh, Stephen Hurd. And so at the time he was a captain, he was to be put to death at Fort Cornwallis. And so, you know, uh, when we look at, at Jeannie's recent book that she published, you know, The Art of Saving Time and Money, I think, you know, man, this lady was just in time. 
<laughs> she, she, she. So you got to figure, this is a slave who who is living on the plantation who they said was six and a half foot tall. She was a towering woman. Wow. And and you know she she's there comfortable with her husband, Daddy Jack. Okay, nine children, and gets word that your master is going to be put to death at Fort Cornwallis during the American Revolutionary War. Okay, and so what do you decide to do to be just in time, in the nick of time, you know, to save time? So you get on on two horses, two very famous horses, and you ride over there, and and you're bound and determined on Lightfoot and Silverheels. Those were the names of the two horses out of the estate stables, Lightfoot and Silver Heels. You ride over with your husband. You make provision for the children to be kept, and we may never come back, okay? But we're going to go try and save this white boy's life. And so we're going to have a massive uh, unveiling of this painting, uh, you know, this this month for International Women's Month, and we're having it framed in gold to join all of these paintings up on the wall. But again, more information here about her and her uh, Sons of the American Revolution listing, her New Georgia Encyclopedia listing, uh, more information in the newspapers like the Athens Banner Herald about this American Shiro. But what a what a fantastic lady to celebrate this year for International Women's Month. What do you think, ladies? Oh, absolutely. I Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the, the righteousness. Go ahead, Patty. No, I'm sorry. I, I overspoke on over you. I, I'm just like touched, you know, like if, mm -hmm. if you if you could even imagine putting yourself in her shoes, the, the, the doing the right thing. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah and, you know, she went she went into the camp. She got their confidence doing their wash and stuff for the English officers. And then she went into the prison a couple of days later, they allowed her to go into the prison under the guise of, of doing his clothes, uh, Captain Hurd's clothes. And she hid him in a basket and snuck off with him. And, and they rode off with him and, and got him out of there, you know, to save his life. So, you know, we just don't hear anything about this. And some people call it woke moments with fake freaks of human nature. It's like, we're not we're not having some weird woke moment you know like my friend tommy holt you know always says we're we're trying to celebrate parts of history that no one has ever told and that even the sons of the american revolution have under uh, uncovered and and like joe Locke has said you know at our events like last year at the spartanburg memorial auditorium up on stage celebrating all these people celebrating she rose having having black speakers up on stage with us and female speakers up on stage um, is is all part of the fun if you love history because if if you're an old man like me at 58 you've already read all this stuff and know it inside and out you're, there's nothing left to read it's quite boring so when we find out about all these really cool new things it is awesome it's exciting we get to study the whole thing all over again so with that, Maybe I would what just... Is, what, what is so, so great is you were sharing the story and then visualizing her life and everything and putting just in perspective, she had to have courage and she had to have faith and she had a strategy. And that those three together she could not help but succeed and in my mind she had positive thinking where there is no way i'm coming out of there without him alive I mean, if if you could narrate that um Absolutely. but she she truly is deserving um Absolutely. of the recognition so, truly it's exciting this this year for international women's day i give you mammy kate a colonial she wrote. Absolutely. And without further ado, I just want to say thank you, ladies, so much uh, for coming on today to help us with this, to celebrate women. If anybody is interested in uh, Patty's book, 
uh, please. It is on Amazon, Patty Frudenberg, uh, Live Your Legacy. If you were interested in uh, the art of saving time and money, it is yeah. available on, on Amazon. Uh, you can go in there and, mm -hmm. and make these purchases. And Charlene, do you have a book uh, hidden in your back pocket that's getting ready to come out? Well, it's my newest release, The Internet, Our Children in Charge. Amazing. Yeah. The answer to that question is yes, they are. <laughs> Amazing. Are you going to do any kind of book signing in Hollywood? Uh, well, I'm donating a couple of books to the events for the uh, parents that'll be there. That okay. is so good. That is so good. You know, Marty, I, I thank you for putting that up. I know we didn't have a chance to chat about it, but I just one minute want to share with people. Oh, please. Yeah. This is this is truly um, inspirational, but it is a living, breathing document. There are 30 phenomenal authors that have their best kept secrets and you're included in there. And it is the art about saving time and money. There's a very much a common denominator, common theme about mindset, changing of a mindset. And you all know that, well, at least in my generation, our generation growing up, my father instilled in us, and he was military 42 years, but he instilled in us loyalty. And when you're with a corporation or a company, you stay with it. Well, times change and there were acquisitions and mergers. And after 25 years, I did a great time in my corporations uh, that I was with, Fortune 50, Abbott Laboratories, AbbVie, DuPont. But then I took early retirement to start my own corporation and COVID hit. And having a corporation, being in a corporation versus being an entrepreneur, such a difference. And there was like no manual on on that new venture, that new journey. So there's a lot of wonderful information on how the how to Marty and Patty and, and Charlene on the money part of it, things that were That's not right. spoken of and talked of. And so, and, and their stories, because a lot of these people did come from poverty or bullying or different walks of life, a lot of diversity, and they are phenomenal people. So truly, it's it's one to, to definitely pick up as a resource. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you so much to, to Bella is going to be on with her book. Uh, we also want to, to announce that we're going to be having all of these authors on from The Art of Saving Time and Money this year. Uh, we're going to be mm -hmm. having uh, many, many of them on each with their own show. And then we want to get Charlene on with her show, uh, Charlene, and have you come on with your book. And that's probably going to be, Charlene, uh, you know, an opportunity to have you come on to one of our specific shows that we always do. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we, we give one away, you know, a copy so uh oh, yeah. that show has done extremely well it's called the free gift show and we have a spinning wheel that spins around and so everybody that was commenting today has a chance to to use a hashtag of the name of your book and then whoever the winner is uh you know it's just a spinning wheel so we ask that you ship them a copy of the book uh from the free gift show so it's kind of a yeah. neat premise of a show Great. It's where you can actually get something for free and and we'll be letting everyone know of course the information about the unveiling of mammy kate and she's going up with the other women and after this people often ask well what's after this um, we're working on a catawba indian nation woman sally new river so she's coming up and then we have a, a secret painting that we're also working on so we're not going to talk about that we'll just we'll just say that it is a general a patriot general from the american revolution so uh, any parting comments today patty thank you so much to our speakers jean marie russo uh stormy mongello uh candidate for public office and ambassador dr charlene doak gebauer on her way to hollywood you're going to hollywood <laughs>
<laughs> I, I always love that when Lionel Richie does that. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, on, on America's Got Talent. Uh, Patty, any, any parting comments before we run off the air today? Uh, my parting comments are, you know, thank you to all the amazing women from the past, from the current and in our future. And, you know, I am so thankful for the history that we keep bringing to the table. Thank you for all your amazing work, Marty and Stormy, because you guys, I mean, that's a, a whole nother hour. We could talk about what you do just to get your history right before you even start the painting. So there's a lot of behind the scenes that I happen to know you do. So I want to thank you for that because it, it yeah. is- it and Sometimes is it's taken years of research, years and years of forensic research and working with families like Susanna Twitty uh, Miller's family. Uh, we have so many of those ladies to thank for sending us photos and stuff. Thank you, Patty. Have a great weekend. You're off to a great, great start here. And uh, you and Michael, I uh, bless you. Live your legacy. Do it.